In college, Jimmer Fredette was a superstar, a phenomenon. In the NBA, he wasn't. This is his dual legacy. On one hand, there's Jimmer at Brigham Young. At BYU, the 6'2 guard dominated his conference and led the Cougars to their best NCAA tournament performances in decades. Fredette peaked as a senior, dominating all of college basketball with a blizzard of buckets so intense that it got its own nickname. Jimmer mania persisted all the way into the Sweet 16. By the spring of 2011, Jimmer was not only a celebrity, but a lottery selection in the NBA draft. And then, on the other hand, we have Jimmer's NBA career. Fredette went 10th in the 2011 draft. The Sacramento Kings, who traded for his rights, preferred Fredette to multiple other players who would go on to be greats. And yet, Fredette couldn't find a place in Sacramento or anywhere else in the NBA. So if you love college basketball, you remember Fredette as a legend. If you only pay attention to the NBA, you know him as a bust. Both are valid, but how do we describe the space between and around those twin legacies? Plenty of college stars flounder as pros, but what makes Jimmer's failure distinct? And when you look around, did he really fail? Jimmer Fredette's path from breakout college star to lottery prospect to the fringe of the NBA is fascinating in part because of who he followed. Jimmer didn't get a lot of recruiting attention out of high school, just like Steph Curry, who entered the NBA draft two years before him. Jimmer's height and weight, not that impressive, just like Steph Curry. Jimmer's game, handling the ball a ton and shooting from way downtown, very Steph-like. As early as Jimmer's junior college season, people asked, can he be the next Steph Curry? At that time, they just meant, could Fredette be the kind of college superstar dominant enough to single-handedly lead his school to its greatest success in a while? And the answer to that question was basically yes. Jimmer shot down opponents with more higher-ranked recruits. Jimmer piloted his previously crappy team on deep postseason runs. As a junior, he lit up Florida to secure BYU's first NCAA tournament win since the early 90s. As a senior, he led the Cougars all the way to the Sweet 16. Jimmer led the entire nation in scoring during his final season. So then people asked again, can he be the next Steph Curry? This time they were talking about the NBA. Curry maintained his distinctive excellence in the league. In 2011, we didn't know yet that Steph would develop into one of the greatest players ever, but it was becoming evident that he could compete against the best of the best without changing his style or position. He could still find and hit three-pointers, threes off the catch, and, counter to all the concerns about his size and position, deep threes off the dribble. Combine that with his complementary abilities to drive and pass, things Curry had deliberately polished during his last year of college, and you had the makings of a truly revolutionary point guard. Here, Jimmer would not be the next Steph Curry. Like Steph, Jimmer handled the ball a lot in college and wanted to be a point guard in the NBA. Before the 2011 draft, Fredette focused on working out for teams with space at that position. He ended up with one of those teams in Sacramento, but Jimmer couldn't make it work in the NBA. Opportunities were scarcer than he expected, and he didn't exactly seize them. Fredette's first coach in Sacramento, Paul Westfall, tried him at point guard, but Jimmer's ball handling didn't pose a threat against bigger, faster defenders. If you can't beat opponents off the dribble, it's going to be hard to create passing lanes and equally hard to take quality shots. And that's just offense. Defense was a problem, too. Westfall got fired during Fredette's rookie season, and future Kings coaches were less inclined to let Jimmer play point guard, especially as the last pick in the same draft outperformed him. That's Isaiah Thomas, and he was a better point guard from the outset. So what about playing more like a shooting guard, finding shots off the catch? To do that, you've got to relinquish the ball and get moving, fill space, cut hard, run fast, and use a lot of screens. That would be new ground for Jimmer. 
but it wasn't unheard of for a not that tall college superstar to try point guard, fail, then reinvent himself as an off-ball maestro. J.J. Redick was finally breaking out as a valuable NBA player right as Fredette entered the league. But Jimmer couldn't find that path either. He tried. After an ugly start, Fredette's numbers improved as he played more of a combo guard role in his second season. But that role came and went. Here, environment played a part. Keith Smart, who replaced Westfall as head coach, got fired after just one full season. The coach who replaced him, Mike Malone, slashed Fredette's minutes. Jimmer only played for brief stretches after injuries and roster moves. He played decently in those appearances and in mid-February 2014, led the Kings in scoring in an exciting OT victory at Madison Square Garden. Within days, he was back out of the rotation. Coach Malone just didn't trust Fredette's defense or his ability to get open or, most of all, his ability to keep the ball moving without turnovers. The Kings agreed to a buyout with their recent lottery pick and, well, he just didn't really stick on another NBA team. It didn't help that his next few employers were defense-oriented squads trying to make the playoffs. Chicago only signed Jimmer to have an extra warm body, not with any real intention to give him a substantial chance. And New Orleans moved on pretty quickly as well. Jimmer did not even become a steady secondary role player in the NBA, let alone a star point guard in the mold of Stephen Curry. It's a bummer, but now we gotta look around. Maybe there is an alternate world wherein Jimmer adapted, kept sharpening his secondary off-ball, non-star skills, maybe accepted a deep bench roll, and slowly chipped into an NBA rotation. In reality, Jimmer didn't change much. In 2015, when the 26-year-old couldn't land a steady NBA job, he entered the NBA D-League draft and ended up with the Westchester Knicks, where, huh, would you look at that? Jimmer was a star again, running point, threatening defenses, long-range bombing, commanding the ball to rank among the league's top scorers. Jimmer Mania came to White Plains, New York. People were attending games just to see Jimmer Fredette, just like college. He was D-League All-Star Game MVP and got a brief call-up with the big league Knicks, who didn't have much use for a kid whose style was bigger than his role would ever be. This was Fredette's athletic prime. His NBA career went nowhere, his non-NBA career went everywhere. Fredette joined the Chinese Basketball Association and Jimmer Mania came to Shanghai. His first season in China, Jimmer led the league in field goal attempts and points and shot one of the best percentages from downtown. Fredette promptly won himself an MVP award and remained a CBA All-Star for seasons to come. And make no mistake, that's a big honor. The CBA is a real deal league that exchanges plenty of talent with the NBA. So too was Fredette's next stop, Panathinaikos, the most historically excellent club in the super competitive Greek league. Here we got a glimpse of a middle path, where Jimmer shot incredibly well without commanding the ball all the time on a squad that featured some other talented expats. He was a star, but a secondary star. In that role, Jimmer won a Greek league championship, albeit an unusual title decided by a league vote because of a pandemic. Entering his mid-30s, Fredette returned stateside for something new, three-on-three -three basketball, yet another realm in which Jimmer can play his style, and in which that style could lead to both individual and team glory. And who's to say this isn't success? Sometimes, talented people are just more comfortable and more effective as the centerpiece of something small than as a cog in something huge. Fredette put it best during his stint in the CBA. His type of basketball is an environment where he can play his game. The NBA wasn't that, but he found alternatives. If you can't be the next Steph Curry in one league, then you can try to be something else and fit in, or you can go be the Steph Curry of another domain. Maybe that's just being Jimmer. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Prism. If you want to see more deep dives on people's legacies, we have a lot more episodes for you to watch.